In this video we are going to talk about Florence, Italy. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Florence is the capital of Tuscany and the Florence metropolitan city. This city is rich in historical and cultural significance. The township of Florence was originally built as a railroad station. The city has outstanding theatre events, ballet companies, and other forms of art and heritage, while maintaining the tranquility of small townships with parks and tree-lined streets. The welcoming nature of the people of the south, as well as its tranquil beauty, make it a must-see destination for tourists visiting Italy. Florence was a major center of medieval European trade and banking, as well as one of the wealthiest cities in the world at the time. Many academics consider it to be the birthplace of the Renaissance, and it has been dubbed the Athens of the Middle Ages. Periods of domination by the strong Medici family, as well as multiple religious and republican revolutions, have marked the country's volatile political history. The city was the capital of the Kingdom of Italy from 1865 to 1871. Established in 1861, Due to the prestige of masterpieces by Dante Alighieri, Petrarch, Giovanni Boccaccio, Nicol Machiavelli, and Francesco Guicciardini, the Florentine vernacular became the language of culture across Italy. The city attracts millions of visitors each year, and the historic center of Florence was designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1982. The city's culture, Renaissance art and architecture, and monuments are well known. The city also has various museums and art galleries, like the Uffizi Gallery and the Palazzo Pitti, and continues to have an impact on art, culture, and politics. Florence has been named one of the most beautiful cities in the world, by Forbes magazine, owing to its cultural and architectural legacy. Florence is a large national economic center, as well as a tourist and industrial hub, and is named among the top 15 fashion capitals in the world by Global Language Monitor. In 2008, the city's average income was ranked 17th in Italy. In central Florence, tourism is the most important industry. Tourists outweigh the local inhabitants from April to October. The Uffizi and Accademia museums are frequently sold out, while the basilicas of Santa Croce and Santa Maria Novella, both of which charge admission, are often packed. Prior to visiting the Uffizi and Accademia, tickets can be purchased online. The city was voted the third most popular tourist destination by readers of Travel Plus Leisure magazine in 2010. Florence was rated the greatest city in Europe by Condé Nast Travel Readers in 2015. Florence is thought to contain the world's highest concentration of art in relation to its size. As a result, cultural tourism is booming, with world-famous museums, like the Uffizi selling more than 1.93 million tickets in 2014. During the 1990s, the city's convention center was reconstructed, and it now hosts exhibitions, conferences, meetings, social forums, concerts, and other events throughout the year. In 2016, there were 20,588 hotel rooms in 570 establishments in Florence. 75% of the rooms are occupied by international guests, with 18% of them from the United States. The city has 8.5 million overnight stays in 2014. According to a Euromonitor report, the city rated as the 36th most visited in the world in 2015, with approximately 4.95 million visitors. Tourism delivers cash to Florence, but it also brings with it a slew of issues. Pickpockets prey on visitors in the Ponte Vecchio, San Lorenzo Market, and Santa Maria Novella. The province of Florence attracts over 13 million tourists every year, and major tourist destinations may become overcrowded as a result during peak seasons. Mayor Dario Nardella expressed worry in 2015 about people that arrive by bus, remain for only a few hours, spend little money, yet contribute greatly to crowding. There was no museum visit, just a snap from the square, then the bus back to Venice. That is not the type of tourist we want, he stated. Food and wine have long been crucial economic staples. The Chianti region, located just south of the city, is known for its Sangiovese grapes, which are significant not only in Chianti Classico wines, but also in many of the more recent Super Tuscan blends. The Carmignano area, 32 kilometers, 20 miles, to the west, is known for its flavorful Sangiovese-based reds. The famed Chianti Rufina district is located a few kilometers east of Florence, physically and historically detached from the major Chianti region. Bulgari, approximately 150 kilometers, 93 miles, southwest of Florence, has recently become known for its wine, reds from the Super Tuscan region, such as Sassicaia and Ornellaia. 
the cradle of high Renaissance art, which spanned from 1450 to 1527, was Florence. While medieval art emphasized biblical tale-telling, Renaissance art emphasized naturalism and human feeling. Renaissance art was rational, mathematical, individualistic, consisted of linear perspective and shading, chiaroscuro, and was mostly produced by specialists, whereas medieval art was abstract, formulaic, and mostly produced by monks, Leonardo da Vinci, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Religion was important, but with the arrival of this new era came the humanization of religious figures in art, such as expulsion from the Garden of Eden, Ecce Homo, Bosch, 1470s, and Madonna della Seggiola. People of this era began to understand themselves as human beings, which was reflected in art. As individuals studied the old masters of the Greco-Roman world, the Renaissance signaled the return of classical values in art and culture. Art became centered on reality rather than idealism. Cimabue and Giotto, the fathers of Italian painting, as well as Arnolfo and Andrea Pisano, architects and sculptors, Brunelleschi, Donatello, and Masaccio, Renaissance forefathers, Ghiberti and the Della Robbers, Filippo Lippi and Angelico, Botticelli, Paolo Uccello, and Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo's universal genius. Their works, as well as those of many other generations of artists, are housed in the town's various museums, the Uffizi Gallery, the Palatina Gallery with paintings from the Golden Ages, the Bargello with Renaissance sculptures, the Museum of San Marco with Fra Angelico's works, the Academy, the Chapels of the Medici's Buonarotti's House with Michelangelo sculptures, and the Academy, the Chapels of the Medici's Buonarotti, the Florence Baptistry, with its mosaics, the Cathedral, with its sculptures, medieval churches, with bands of frescoes, public and private palaces, Palazzo Vecchio, Palazzo Pitti, Palazzo Medici Riccardi, Palazzo de Vanzati, monasteries, cloisters, and refectories, the Setosa. Documents from Etruscan civilization can be found in the archaeological museum. In fact, the city is so rich in art that some first-time tourists suffer from the Stendhal syndrome when they first see it. During the Middle Ages, Florence became a musical center and music, and the performing arts remain a significant aspect of the city's culture. Its rise to prominence was likely aided by the emergence of northern Italian cities in the 1500s. In terms of holy and secular music, there were four types of patronage in the city during the Renaissance, state, corporate, church, and private. The Florentine Camerata met here in the mid-16th century to experiment with setting Greek mythology to music and staging the result. In other words, the first operas, setting the stage not only for the development of the operatic form, but also for the development of separate classical forms, like the symphony and concerto. Italian trends swept Europe after 1600, and by 1750, it had become the dominant musical language. The madrigal, which originated in Italy, has acquired popularity in the United Kingdom and internationally. Rather than refined fine cooking, Florentine cuisine is based on a tradition of peasant dining. The majority of the recipes are meat-based. The entire animal was originally eaten. Tripe, tripper, and stomach, lamprodotto, were once regularly on the menu and are still available at the city's food carts. Crostini Toscani, sliced bread rounds covered with a chicken liver-based pate, and sliced meats are among the antipasti, mainly prosciutto and salami, often served with melon when in season. The generally saltless Tuscan bread made with natural, levan can be found in a variety of Florentine dishes, including ribolita and papa al pomodoro soups, as well as panzanella, a summer salad of bread and fresh vegetables. The bistecca alla fiorentina is a huge T-bone steak, of chianina cattle roasted over hot charcoal, and served very rare with its more recently evolved version, the tagliata, sliced rare meat served over a bed of arugula, frequently with slices of parmesan cheese on top. The majority of these dishes are typically served with local olive oil, which is likewise a high-quality product with an international reputation. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.